The way I see it, there are three reasons that you would want to have internet on your cruise vacation. The first is when you are with a party and you're at sea and you don't have any cell service, that having some basic internet will allow you to communicate with the rest of the people in your party. The second is that you may just want to surf a little bit and stay connected to social media. But the third group of people are people who need to work. And I am in that third category. I was able to go on a cruise, which is an awesome vacation if you've never done it. I went on Royal Caribbean, which is an awesome cruise line if you've never been on them. But one of the things that goes along with my job is that I am on call. Because of that, I bought the more expensive Voom Surf Plus Stream Voyage package. And I paid $202 for my three devices to be able to surf and stream and video chat and do all those other things. Now, primarily the reason why I bought this is that I need to be able to manage servers that are connected to my work. And so with that in mind, I got on the boat and did a test connection a little bit after our lifeboat drill. When I booted up my laptop, I was absolutely shocked to realize that I could not access my VPN. Now, I'm not talking about the ones for getting around geo-blocking. I'm not talking about private internet access. I have that. I'm not talking about Pro XPN. I have that as well. I'm talking about I was blocked from using my corporate VPN. And I'm not talking about my one corporate VPN. I'm talking I have five corporate VPNs and they were all blocked. And this is a problem. Again, I see one of the main reasons why people would ever want to use VPN on a cruise ship as being able to work while they're on the road, or at least being able to be on call when they're on the road. And when you are not able to access your corporate network, then you are pretty much out of luck. Now, for some reason, I thought it was a good idea to go and talk to the guy at this desk. And uh, he smiled at me and said, yes, we have decided as a corporation to block all VPNs for your security. Now, one of the things that drives me absolutely insane is when someone gives me a blatantly wrong technical answer with that kind of confidence. And I could see on my own machine that they didn't block Nmap. I was able to see that there are 1,215 other devices at that time looking at me, and I was looking at them, and I had no way to tunnel out of that network and protect the traffic of my machine. But even more than that, I had absolutely no way to work if I couldn't access my servers. Now, while I admit there are probably only 5% of people who bought this expensive package really needed it for work, but those people really need access to their VPNs. It's not optional to have that to connect to my home network. Now, I did notice that they didn't block things like uh, AnyConnect, and they didn't block things like RDP. Personally, I don't really even like using RDP without a VPN, um, if nothing else, just to shield the DNS lookups and all that kind of stuff. But I think it's a stupid policy to block VPNs, but it's their boat, and they have the right to do it. So use... 10 words of text on your website somewhere around the internet saying, hey, we block VPNs so that I can make that decision before I'm stuck at sea if I want to be completely disconnected from my work. And I can tell people at work that, hey, I can't connect and not a problem. The problem is you make a policy like that and then people get on the boat and then they're just out of luck. And that is not cool at all. Now, I was able to get connected, and I'm not going to disclose how I did that on this video, but I was actually able to access my servers, and we're just going to leave it at that. The next thing will vary greatly from ship to ship and itinerary to itinerary. My itinerary was leaving out of Miami, going to Haiti and um, St. Thomas and San Juan, Puerto Rico, and that has to do with the speed. Now, I understand that it is a technical marvel that you are connected to a satellite in the middle of the Caribbean and able to access the internet at all. In general, 
when we were at sea, my connection was ridiculously slow, even when I had a strong Wi-Fi signal. And I'm talking, it could take two hours to download a podcast. I would get speeds of like 0.16 or something like that on my internet speed tests. It could take... 30 seconds to load a Facebook page or an email. Um, definitely not the uh, the communication thing where they say that you can video chat and stuff like that. I attempted one voice call on the uh, boat, ironically, to Royal Caribbean's technical support, and they could not understand me, so I wound up just hanging up on them. So, again, I love the boat. I love this style of vacation. I love the fact that I was able to connect at all, but it was way more difficult than it needed to be because they blocked all VPNs. And now that I know this, I can make some backup plans. And I would suggest that if you need to work on a Royal Caribbean cruise, that you make some backup plans yourself. Now, I will say one thing kind of ironically. All of the VPNs that were blocked on the Royal Caribbean ship actually worked from mainland China. Now, I was not there during the coronavirus scare, but I was actually able to use all of this technology that Royal Caribbean actively blocked behind the Great Firewall. So just kind of think about that. Have a great day. Thanks for watching.